So, on this first episode, we are going to get my truck up in the air and get started on replacing these control arms I got upper and lower. Uh, new bushings, new ball joints. We'll get this thing steering a little better. It's kind of uh, too hands-on and uh, a lot of work right now to drive the truck and keep it straight. So, let's get going. So, this is the 94, it's actually GMC, what they call an OBS, old body style. They're getting really popular right now. Prices are starting to go up. This one's kind of rough. Needs some paint, but it's not rusted out or anything. It's pretty solid, it's got some dents. But uh, we've already did the 4.6 drop on it four inches lower in the front and six in the rear it's got a little c notch i don't know if you can see it back there or not but yeah did a little bit of work to it it's got some camaro wheels on it um what you look inside Just some bucket seats and console didn't come with it but i found these for a deal and they're not ripped up too bad or anything it's dirty in here. Dash is non-existent. I got one of those covers on it. For now, I'm kind of putting that off. But it's a fun little truck. Um, LS swap. 5.3. Uh, we built that here at the shop dad helped me put that together but wise co pistons scat rods um it's twenty thousands over uh, we ended up going with a 4l80 transmission shifts good it's got cold ac hot heater but um i'm sure you'll see this on future episodes uh today we're gonna try to make it a little easier to drive the it wanders and all over the road and it's, it's just kind of a chore to drive so i'm gonna get it in here get it on the lift and uh get started i like to get it up in there a little bit push on it Best as you can get it. So we got it in the air. Um, these are Camaro wheels. I forget what year, but it's five spoke. Looks good on here, I think. And they're super cheap. Like these, the back one's got some road rash on it and stuff. Um, but it's a different bolt pattern. As you can see, there's a spacer here. Um, I put a little Loctite on the spacer threads just for peace of mind. You know, you don't want those things getting loose driving. Uh, I know it's not ideal to have these lug spacer things, but I've been driving it quite a bit and it works pretty good. I mean, I haven't had any troubles yet. My brother got me this set. It's kind of handy. It's uh, for wheel lugs and they got nylon or some sort of polymer on here and it's six of the common sizes. So usually just grab this little red thing and uh, good to go. Take off any tire and wheel usually that you come across. If not, we got the toolbox over there, but uh, these are impact rated too. Kind of cool. If any of you guys are trying to put these Camaro wheels on your OBS, um, I had to get these center caps, these dust covers uh, from AutoZone. This, I think, is the factory one, and at least it was the one that was on the truck, and you could tell the shape is a little different, and with this one on there, couldn't get the center cap to go on it. it just wasn't enough room for it. And I guess this one just takes up a little less volume. Um, and I don't have the part number, but it was on the shelf at AutoZone for that. And it 
just lets it work with that center cap. Next, we gotta get these calipers out of the way. There's a couple Allen head bolts right here you gotta do and we can swing this caliper out of the way. These are nine millimeter, or at least that's what I'm using to take them off, but it's working. All right, got the caliper off, these two slide bolts loose, and just kind of have it propped to the side with a piece of wire. Some rusty old wire. Got the fingers nice and dirty, but I'm sure they're gonna get more, a lot more dirty than that. All right, we got that dust cap popped off. Now I gotta get that cotter pin and that big nut in the middle off and we'll get the rotor out of the way. So I got a size 30 on here, but technically this shouldn't be too tight. If it's too tight, then them bearings in there is gonna be under pressure and heat and that's not good. But literally this one was just a little tighter than that, had it loose, but it shouldn't be too tight on this one. Okay, got the rotor slid off. Looks pretty good. I don't see any. All right, so we got three 13 millimeter bolts holding this dust shield on, so we're gonna pop that off. So this is the McGoy's hub spindle. And you could see on this one, it, the spindle itself sits a little bit higher in relation to everything. So with this part that holds the wheel higher, it makes the truck sit lower. If I'm thinking about that, right? So we got to get this off of there, but we'll get this outer tie rod disconnected and uh, get it loose. But you don't want to hit on the ends of these when you get it loose. You want to wall up right here on the side with a hammer and uh, usually it'll pop out. If you hit right here, you might damage the tie rod and probably won't come out anyways. There we go. So now I've got that tie rod loose. We lowered the truck down. I put it on the jack here to compress the suspension a little bit. We got to get in here into that upper shock mount there and then there's two on the bottom and we can slide that shock out through the bottom. I think mine had two 13 millimeters down here but then this shock just kind of wiggles out this way. Unless the earth's in the way. I'm gonna go up a little higher I guess. So now we gotta get that sway bar unbolted from the lower control arm and start unbolting the control arms themselves which now that I'm thinking about it I probably should hit some of them bigger bolts with some sort of penetrant so I want to bring you in look at these uh, bushings man I guess that's what 27 years of abuse will do to it but the uh, they don't look so good so we're gonna switch the whole control arm assemblies out. Comes loaded with bushings and ball joints. So we're going with Moog problem solvers, but I think for the price, that's a pretty good uh, part. Yeah, I think we'll be happy with those. And if you look at these ball joints, I think it's riveted in here and pressed in down here. just seems like it would be way easier just to swap the control arms out for new ones that are loaded. Save time, I guess, and just make it easier on yourself. At least that's what they told me to do in the forums when I searched it up, but let's see. All right, so now we gotta get this uh, brake line holder out of the way. There's two bolts, I got an 11 on there. So we'll get that off the upper control arm. All right, we got those brake lines the brake line loose from the control arm. Now we got to get the uh, control arm, I mean the sway bar bolt out here. I think it's a 17, so we'll get that loose real quick. Get that sway bar disconnected. All right, we got the sway bar disconnected and 
I guess we're gonna go ahead and start loosening these uh, ball joints and get them disconnected. So, uh, getting a couple steps and we'll have these uh, control arms off of there. All right, we got the ball joints disconnected. Remember a few good taps with a big hammer on the side of, and those usually will break free. Um, so we got that off. I guess we need to wrestle that spring out and uh, start working on the control arm bolts. All right, starting to get these control arms loose, but it's hard to see, but I think there's some alignment washer thingies in here, but it'd be a good idea to see what orientation they're in now so when you put it back together you can kind of put those alignment things back kind of how they were well i took pictures of that alignment thing and uh, this one you could see a little better it's uh they're like a oblong shape and i guess depending on where you put it, it adjusts the suspension so i'm just gonna kind of mark it in my phone and try to put it back best i can in this orientation anyways. I right, got the upper control arm out and you could see it is just toast. Time to be replaced, but it was 21 millimeters for these upper bolts and it looks like the bottom is uh, 24. So let's get that lower control arm out now. I killed one of the batteries on my impact, but got the lower control arm bolts loose so let's get it out of there yeah that ball joint seen better days too all right oh what's that little guy doing in there from oh well we freed it so all right got them all loose control arms gone we are about ready to start putting it back together but it is almost supper time and it is sunday night so i think we're gonna call it quits for tonight here but we will be back at it tomorrow just wanted to show you some side-by-side -side shots on the these two things i mean worn out bushings blown out ball joints and look at this new one uh probably make it look a little better underneath there too and hopefully make it steer a little straighter and just drive better everyone said it was just much easier just to buy them like that fully loaded and swap them out so that's the way we're going all right we got the upper control arm wiggled in there got the bolts just loosely tightened brake line is uh connected back with those couple little bolts there so we're moving along here goes the lower mounts about ready to go in i guess it would be better to just go ahead and switch this bump stop over to the new one now while it's out i think it's just one bolt, one bolt on the bottom yeah Let's see if we can get that swapped over real quick. Well, the bottom control arm bolts, they're different sizes, so just make sure you look at that and it only goes one way, so just a little FYI. All right, so after some hammering and prying, we got the bottom control arm in. Um, springs in there, and you'll, you'll see a little recess in the bottom control arm where the bottom of this spring needs to end up where the the last coil ends you'll see a little hole so you just kind of make sure to align that spring kind of back the way it was and get it centered in there um about ready to set this back in there but uh, the bottom one was a lot harder than the upper control arm to get in there for some reason but we got it. All right, got the control arms mounted, bolted in. Uh, tie rods hooked back up. 
sway sway bar end link we got that bolted in it's snug the ball joints are all snugged up i have found the torque specs online put new cotter pins on both uh, it's easy to find the torque specs if you just do a quick search uh, i got the shock bolted back in the what was it oh the upper shock bolt was a little tricky because i had to compress the suspension to to tighten that one but wasn't bad once i compressed it up a little bit it gave me enough threads to tighten the top and now with all that part bolted in we're gonna move on to putting the brakes and bearings and stuff back together and it'll pretty much be done with this side got the grease in the ball joints now you can see it just coming out down there you don't want to put too much you don't want to overfill them make a mess or break the rubber pieces or anything just just till it starts to squirt out the bottom of them and they're full they're designed that way to squirt in the top and it kind of flushes the contaminants out the bottom and keeps clean grease on them that way but so got that done let's start putting the the brakes and bearings and all that stuff and we'll be done all right got the hub back on brake rotor and tightening this adjusting bolt you don't want to get it too tight where you're putting a lot of preload on the bearing you want it still spin freely but you don't want it too loose where you got slack in there because that'll ruin your bearing so it's a fine game you got to play but um everyone's got a different way of doing it I tighten it down the manual that I saw said to 15 foot pounds I didn't use a torque wrench I just kind of got it tight and saw that it was dragging on the the bearing and then came off about a sixth back loose I don't know about this the size of one side of this bolt one sixth off of that tight spot and now it feels pretty loose and uh, there's we'll go with that and I repacked the bearing too so and they're all fresh bearings I didn't they're only about six months old so we'll go with that everyone's got a different way of doing it but that's just kind of how I did it so I went ahead and filled the cap with grease too that way when I put that on there it'll force it into the bearing and kind of pack it a little extra in there just for a little peace of mind There you go. Yeah, I see it squirting out. Yeah, that'll work. Tap it on with the little mallet. Nice. All right, quick spray. Get any fingerprints, grease, residue. Get that off of there. You don't want to be burning up your brake pads. See the brake pads still got a lot of life. They're pretty new. I'll keep them that way. Ooh, this makes a lot of dust. Well, both control arms installed. Everything's back together. All looks pretty good. You got new bushings, new ball joints. The shocks are new. Uh, the, brake, the brakes are still pretty new. All the steering except for the gearbox has been replaced. So hopefully we'll get it aligned. We still have to do the other side. Just the same thing we just did. Just do it on the other side. Give, get it aligned. We'll try to drive it. And hopefully it's pretty good. If not, we got to swap out that gearbox. I tried adjusting the gearbox to get the slack out of it. But it didn't seem like it did anything. So hopefully doing all this and getting rid of all those old bushings and ball joints will help it a lot, but we'll see. All right, just gotta do the other side. Went ahead and used some rattle can gloss black on the parts of the frame that were on this side. Just might as well before I throw the tire back on there just to kind of dress it up a little bit. It took like two seconds so that I even hit the sway bar a little bit all right update we got 
the passenger side done. We're gonna get going on the driver side. Just got the brake caliper out of the way and uh, just wanted to give you a before of the arms and stuff, so. Nothing special, 